name's Tim Silverwood. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of an organisation called Take Three. Uh, we're particularly inspired and passionate about the problem of plastic pollution in our oceans and what it was doing to wildlife um, through being a surfer, basically. And um, it's led me on this incredible journey, which is now that I'm travelling Australia and the world, educating the community about the problem and trying to inspire them to take local action because it's clear to me if we're going to do something about this very global problem, then we need to actually inspire people to get them acting locally to make a positive difference. Well, at the end of the day, if we let our oceans go the way they're going and we let them go to a collapse point, you know, I might not even really recognise it in my life immediately. But what about future generations? Because it's clear that what's going to happen here with the demise of our oceans is that humanity itself is threatened. Our oceans will go on, other species will go on, but it's us. So it's quite ironic at the end of it here, whereas we feel like as environmentalists we're going out there to try and you know, save the wildlife. At the very core of it, it's ethnocentric. Humans are the ones that are going to suffer the most in the long run. So it's up to all of us, whether it's because the oceans are giving us half of the oxygen that we breathe, or whether it's because the very complex food web that we survive on starts there in the ocean. So we all have a vested interest in keeping our oceans healthy and safe for future generations. There is so much evidence of the pressures that are facing our oceans. Overfishing is incredibly evident. We've seen the demise of large fish stocks by up to 90% for some species. This, the science is in. We know we can't keep doing it this way, otherwise those fish stocks will plummet into uh, out of existence. Other issues are a little bit more complicated, and yes, there's definitely uncertainty about what the long-term impact, impacts of plastic pollution are, but you've only really got to think about it in simplistic terms here. This stuff didn't exist in the oceans 50 years ago. We know now the scale of the problem where upwards of a million innocent creatures are dying every year as a result of ingesting or becoming entangled in debris. If we don't start acting on this now, then what's it going to be like in another 50 years time? So we have to start embracing some sort of precautionary principle. If the evidence is there, our academic community is telling us what's going to take place, we have to push for change at a legislation level, at a government level, and get our corporate um, businesses more responsible for these long-term impacts. If we don't act now, we're going to be looked upon in future generations as the docile generation, the generation that did nothing in light of such resounding evidence. It's time to act. Um, yeah, well, I used to be sponsored a uh, professional bodyboarder for about 15, 20 years, and um, yeah, basically, I used to, um, I guess my main achievements was discovering some of the most uh, out there crazy waves, sort of like, uh, I was the first bodyboarder to surf uh, ship sterns, Luna Park, and then, yeah, a lot of discovery through a lot of the uh, wild regions of Australia. Yeah, that's, and then I guess um, my relationship to the ocean is, yeah, every single memory from as far back as I can remember. Always being in the water, at the beach. Um, yeah, it's just always a massive part of my life. And uh, so I grew up next to the ocean. So yeah, it was always a huge part of my life. And then you got all the uh, pollution too, like the Eastern Garbage Patch. That's just a massive example of all the um, all the bottles and plastics that don't break down in the environment, um, just collecting them. I mean, it's also the plastics that do break down that a lot of animals swallow and uh, kills all the sea life. And along with that, obviously, makes our beaches dirty and uh, and unsustainable. Uh, well, obviously, my uh, business is selling boards to everyone who enjoys the ocean. So, if uh, the ocean's like toxic or you know, things like Fukushima, um, people don't want to go surfing anymore, it's going to affect me personally on a day-to-day -day basis because not only will um, my livelihood be gone, but the thing I love doing, which is surfing, I won't be able to do that either. So yeah, it's a massive impact for me, but um, also, you know, I've got um, baby twins that are only five months old now and I want them to also enjoy uh, the joys of the ocean and the, the lifestyle around it. So yeah, I think um, it's massive loss for everybody if we don't look after our oceans and uh, care for them in the way we should.
plastic shopping bags were used in 2007. This is in Australia alone. Over 220 million tonnes of plastic is produced each year. 80% of ocean pollution comes from land-based sources. Australians generate around 1,200 kilograms of waste per person each year. Plastic debris kills approximately 2 million seabirds and over 100,000 mammals each year, including sea turtles, dolphins, penguins, fish and seals. Plastic takes hundreds of thousands of years to break down completely, which is unsustainable at the rate we are producing it. It is also slowly being disintegrated into tiny fragments named microplastics, which are accidentally ingested into two-thirds of the world's fish stock many of which we consume.